What up guys, welcome back to the garage, man. Today, we got ourselves another package from Nomis Industries. So, he sent out another PR4. This is an OBD0 PR4 ECU inside of here that we are gonna be able to try on Marcus's EF. Now, this is the same ECU that we already have. But this will help us rule out whether the ECU is actually bad or not. We're gonna get into that in a little bit, but for the time being, I'm wanting to satisfy not only my curiosity, but a lot of your guys' curiosity as to whether or not Khaki's timing is off. So we need to check the timing marks. We're gonna spin the engine, line it up, make sure all the timing marks are lined up, in which I've already done this, but I didn't do it on camera, so I want to satisfy a lot of your guys' interest, but I also want to go through the valves and check the valve lash. That is something that I did not, I, I haven't done yet. Um, it doesn't sound like it needs a valve adjustment. You know how they get kind of noisy. Uh, also, I'm under the impression because it had really good test results whenever we did the compression test. That I'm, I'm under the impression that if the valve lash was all out of whack that we would see, we, we wouldn't have seen such good numbers when we did the compression test. I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head. I just remember they're all good. Anyhow, I'm going to pop the valve cover off. We're going to spin the engine over, uh, check the timing, and then we'll go through, check all the valve lash, and just eliminate a couple more things off the list before I just go ahead and send it and tear this thing apart. All right, so it's gonna be hard for you guys to see down inside of there, but just trust me, the timing mark on the crank is lined up and my cam gears are all lined up. I have top dead center is set right now and all my timing marks are lining up where they need to be. And I'm just doing this to show it to you guys because I, I have already checked this um, once or twice actually over the course of the last six months. But anyhow, like I said, the one thing that I have not done is check the valve lash. So we're gonna go ahead and move forward with doing that. Um, I'm gonna start on the exhaust side. I need to get my feeler gauges out and we are looking for 0 .008, somewhere like that, on the exhaust side. So my feelers, one of these is a good set and one of them is not. I think that's a good set. <sighs> Here we go. All right, now whenever you're doing your valve adjustment, it's important for you to know your firing order. It's one, three, four, two. This is a B series VTEC. Well, honestly, most Honda engines are one, three, four, two. But with my particular engine, that's all I'm thinking about right now. It's cylinder one, three, one, three, four, two. And with it at top dead center right now, cylinder one, the cam lobes are up and away from the lifters, the pad in which they ride on. That is obviously the position that you want it to be in for you to actually check the valve lash. You don't want your valve, you don't want your cam sitting on the valves applying any kind of pressure because you can't check the clearance that way. What I'm gonna be doing here, because well right now the exhaust, the exhaust cam, the lobes as you can see are up in the air. Like if you look over here on cylinder two, you see the lobes are actually pushing down on the valves you do not want to do any kind of adjustment if there's pressure on the valves because you will destroy shit. So um, anyhow, and you can also feel that your rockers will move a little bit. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear it. Nah, you can't really hear it very well because mine are, I, I honestly think that my adjustment is pretty good right now, but we're gonna find out. But the intake side, the the lobe is also sticking up, but I'm only gonna focus on the exhaust side right now. I'm gonna go through and do all of the exhaust valves, and then I'm gonna go back and go through and do all the intake valves. It's just easier for me that way rather than going back and forth. For my exhaust side, I am going to be using a .008 filler gauge. All right, so I have a 10 millimeter on my ratchet. I got my filler gauge, and I've also got a 10 millimeter. Well, this is a pipe wrench, but basically just an open end wrench. Also a flathead, man, so we are gonna gonna get into this zooming in on cylinder number one exhaust side first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and pop these loose just loosen them up a little bit I'm gonna put my wrench on there and just turn the adjuster I like to kind of get the the adjuster and the the nut that holds it tight just 
kind of get them apart from one another you know what i mean work some lubrication into the threads i guess you could say and now go through my filler gauge and it goes between between the stem of the valve and our rocker so what i like to do is go ahead and tighten it down so right now it fits in there loosely i'm going to actually tighten it down to where it kind of clamps my filler gauge in between the two and then what i do is just back it off a little bit until i get that little bit of drag on my filler gauge that I want so if I go a little bit tighter that is too tight loosen it so right about there and I'll leave the filler gauge in there and I'm gonna reach in with my open end wrench and go ahead and tighten that jam nut come on get on all right kind of got tightened a little bit so now I'll tighten it a little more make sure it's good and snug with my ratchet like so now double check it with the filler gauge. Make sure we have a little bit of drag. And there it is, that's good. Do the same thing over here on this side now. Get my filler gauge between my rocker. Filler gauge between the rocker. Tighten the adjuster down till the filler gauge don't move. It's good and tight, way too tight. You don't wanna leave it like that. Now slowly back it out until I have enough drag on my filler gauge. Hold our adjuster with the screwdriver. Tighten it up with the wrench. Sometimes you can kind of snug it up with your finger and then give it that last little snug with the wrench. That's just to make sure that our adjuster doesn't move now snug it up the rest of the way with the ratchet double check it so sometimes whenever you tighten it it'll tighten the adjuster also you got to go back and loosen it a little bit so sometimes it takes a couple of times and it's funny i bring that up because that's exactly what it did this time so <laughs> Yeah, that's about perfect. I gotta try to get it snugger with the wrench so it's not moving that adjuster as we're tightening. All right, we still have that little bit of drag that I want. I'm gonna try to tighten it with the ratchet again. And our drag is still there this time. Nice. So yeah, sometimes you gotta, you know, do it a few times till it's right. But that's the process. I'm gonna go ahead and continue that on all of the exhaust side. So we have to spin the engine first. Our next cylinder that is going to be uh, where the lobes are gonna be loose. Our, our next cylinder in the firing order is cylinder number three. So um, I have to spin the engine 90 degrees. And a helpful thing is the fact that you see these four points on the cam gear. So a top dead center. Uh, these are pointing up. These two marks are pointing at one another. So for me to spin the engine in 90 degrees, you'll see that these next two, this one and this one, are going to line up with one another. So as you spin this around, if you get to where these next two legs, these little points of the cam gear are pointing at one another, that is basically 90 degrees right there. And then you come over here and look at our next cylinder on the firing order, cylinder number three, you see our lobes are now pointing up in the air and they are completely off of our rocker, ready for us to make our adjustment. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust these. Once I do, then I'll need to spin the engine uh, 90 degrees once again lining up the next two arms on the cam gears and then that will be cylinder number four and then the cam lobes on cylinder number four will be pointing up and then once I finish that one spin the engine 90 degrees once again and then cylinder number two will be to the point where we're able to uh, adjust the valves on it. So I'm gonna do all the in, uh, exhaust valves first and then I'm gonna come back and basically repeat the process but doing the intake valves. All right, so I have checked them all. I just spun the engine over and I am currently on cylinder number two. So I just wanted to show you guys this really quick. I spin it over and then the first thing I do is I put the screwdriver in here and kind of lift up on the rocker arm a little bit. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this or not but if you pull up, you can see there's a little bit of movement up and there's just, dude, ever so slightly, just a little bit of movement. So those rocker arms, they, they do, they have a little bit of movement in them, a little bit of play, you know what I'm saying? So you want to lift them up before you go and check your spacing in between here. So the filler gauge fits in, dude, the filler gauge fit into most of them with a little bit of drag, exactly what it is we need. So I didn't even crack them open and adjust them at all. So uh, moving on to the intake side now, I want to get a different filler gauge set because 0.008 is the, is the smallest this one goes to. I don't know if you guys can see that, but 0.007, that is the filler gauge I'm gonna be using for my intake side. 
and I need to put a little bend in it because this filler gauge set is not the bent type. And to get down in there, you definitely want these things bent. But anyhow, I'm gonna go over the uh, the intake side now. I honestly don't think that there's gonna be much adjustment needed, but I'll let you guys know. I'm gonna tell you right now, we're gonna get this done. I'm gonna pop the valve cover back on start it just to verify that's still running the same um while it's running we will go ahead and test to see if we have any um vacuum leaks around the intake manifold and the throttle body that's another thing another common uh comment that i've been seeing is that potentially the intake manifold gasket is leaking so we're going to test for that next but i have a feeling we are tearing this engine apart boys well, intake side is all good. Every single one of them checked out, dude. They all, none of them need any adjustments. So, um, in which I'm, I'm not surprised. I adjusted the, the valve lash uh, quite some time ago and it's still good where I set it a long time ago. Anyhow, um, I also just remembered that uh, we sprung a leak the other day on the O-rings for the injectors. So, I can't start it right now unless I tear that all apart and put new O-rings and put it all back together. Dude, I, I'm telling you, it's not, it's not a, uh, I really don't think it's a vacuum leak, dude, at the intake manifold. And at this point, I really don't want to tear the fuel injectors out just to put O-rings, just to put it all back together, just for it to run the same, uh, just to tear it all back out again. You know, it's just a bunch of, uh, wasted work, just like, just like doing a valve adjustment right now was, honestly. I mean, it's not wasted work. At least we're, we're eliminating, you know, what it could potentially be. Our timing is set. The valve lash is good honestly if it was a vacuum leak it would be a crazy high idle and that's that's not the problem i'm having but it's just no matter no matter what it is you do to this thing it's not a high idle the problem the problem is it sounds like a subaru bro like it has like a constant misfire it has that like sound you know the dude there that, that's not i really don't think that's a vacuum leak it's it's losing compression somewhere or uh i don't know man something i'm telling you dude i'm telling you i think we pull the head off this engine it's gonna be like ah ha, ha, ha. there's the problem kind of moment all right so also i know i said i was gonna pull the head off of this thing but i mean while we are gonna pull the head off i think it's going to be better for me to just go ahead and yank the whole entire thing bro i like assembling my engines on a stand so i like disassembling and assembly on a stand to me it's just easier um it's a lot easier to be thorough with everything so that's what i'm going to do so i'm tired of having these problems man i just want to tear it all out make sure everything's right as we're putting it back together <laughs> gonna have some super clean floor absorbent ready for this one because i just i just have this feeling i'm gonna need it oh oh yep what the hell it's dripping from like 15 different places so the, the radiator Ooh, smells funky i have nothing but uh water and water wetter in there so probably pop the radiator cap off and it'll probably flow a little bit even more even oh shit oh that makes it shoot way the hell out all right Oh, shit, okay, all right. Whew. Not terrible, not terrible. 
Oh, okay. It's just raining. It, it could have been worse. Oh, that's where my screwdriver went. You know, I've learned to not care, like, be so careful with using this stuff. Like, I, I used to kind of use it sparingly, you know what I'm saying? Try to use as little as possible, but there's really no need, man. Just freaking put it on there, you know what I'm saying? Grab the broom, mix it around, soak up whatever it is you spilled, and then use a uh, dustpan and just scoop it back into here. It's reusable. I mean, to a certain extent, you know what I mean? All right, so I want to give you guys a really quick update on Marcus's car. The freaking problem child, this wiring disaster that we got going on over here. Um, and you guys have met Chris before. What What's going on, dog? So he has a YouTube channel. I'm going to put it on the screen right now. This dude just came over, and on, I don't know if you helped us, dude. I don't know. I don't know if this was help or if this was just like... <laughs> I tried. So he, he has an extra PR4 that he brought. As, as you guys know, Nomis uh, sent one out. Um, so he, we tried his PR4, and that was the exact same thing. But he has this weird JDM ECU. I've never seen one of these before. So whatever this thing is, put in the comments if any of you guys have ever seen one of these. I'll try to get a, it to focus on it. It says Y1 on it. I, dude, I have no idea what this thing is. So, but this is an OBD0 ECU. And he said he got this out. He, well, he thinks he got this out of an Integra. He's had it sitting around for a while. OBD0, weird ECU, right? So our problem is we have spark, but we don't have uh, uh, fuel injectors. We put that ECU in and it flipped now we don't have spark but now the injectors are freaking firing dude what the hell's going <laughs> dude that, like i dude i don't freaking know man so i i think at this point what we're gonna do are you gonna let me borrow that ecu for a little bit yeah, you can hold on to it and the other one sick so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna try to figure out some more information about that ecu um and since the injectors are firing so clearly the wiring must be right in some kind of way i don't know um what I'm going to do is go through the pinouts for the distributor and see what's different from the PR4 to that one. Um, and hopefully do some more troubleshooting there and poking of wires and might be able to figure something out. Yeah, so you see we don't have spark now on this ECU. But now we have pulse from the injector. And you can actually smell fuel, so... Careful, we don't want to flood the damn thing. And I have no idea, but I I think this I think this is a good thing. I think this is a step closer. I I don't know. <laughs> Either way, huge shout out to this man. He 
I, I think I think he helped us. You'll see only at the end when it's running, you'll know <laughs> if it did better. Yeah. I know, right? It's either, dude, I don't know. I'm just mind fucked with this thing, bro. I don't even know why Wiring, it's just how it is. Either. What could be different about it? Well, clearly a lot, dude. I've never even seen an ECU like that before. You I said you think you... I found it at the junkyard in an Integra, and I saw it plugged in, and it was OBD0. I was like, this might be handy one day, so I grabbed it. Yeah. Along with that's the wild. Four, that also came out of an Integra, too. Yeah, that's wild, man. Anyhow, shout out to this guy. Like I said, he does have a YouTube channel. Go throw him a follow. Yeah, Give him some love. <laughs> well, that was super dope of Chris to come by and... You know, just lend a hand and drop off some ECUs that we could try. So we had a PR4 in here. That's what we've been working with, trying to get to work. And it just had us under the impression that potentially the ECU was bad. We just tried a PR4 that Chris also brought and it was doing the exact same thing. So what are the chances that the PR4 that uh, Nomis sent us out is going to work? <laughs> Who freaking knows, man? Maybe we just so happen to have two bad PR4s and Maybe this one will work. I mean, we have to try it. All right, got the ECU swapped out. Make sure this ignition is on. It's a really simple test. We're just gonna hook the battery up and hit the starter and see if we have any action coming from that Noid light for the fuel injectors. No, sir. I'll try to flip this thing over. These lights only work one way. I don't, I'm not sure which way it is. So I always just try both ways. <laughs> nope. All right, so the problem is not that we have a bad ECU. It most certainly lies in a wiring somewhere, but what confuses me is whatever the hell this damn ECU is, I'm gonna give you guys a closer look at it right now because hopefully, I'm, I'm hoping the comment section is gonna let me know. But um, whatever it is that this ECU is, the wiring that the car, the, the way it currently is, the fuel injectors work but the distributor don't. And then with the wiring exactly the way it is, we put the PR4 in there, it's the opposite. The injectors don't work and the distributor does. What? <laughs> Man. Anyhow guys, at this point, I have done absolutely no research on this whatsoever. So I have zero idea what this is. All I know is it has a big old sticker that says Y1 right here. I don't know if PJ0 is the ECU number or what, but this is the sticker that's on the side. Uh, this, is, this is obviously an OBD0 ECU. And then this is the only other sticker on it is this right here. Made in Japan. Yeah, I don't know, dude. Anybody knows what this is, let me know. Throw it in the comments. I'm going to be keeping an eye on the comments section because I am um, later this evening going to be doing research on this because I need to figure out uh, the pins on this ECU. Like what is different from this one to the PR4 um, as far as the fuel injection and distributor. So then I get, maybe that will be a big red flag. Like, hey, yo, this ECU has these wires like this for fuel injection where the PR4 doesn't. So then I can just go to the PR4 and then just do that and yeah, hopefully everything will work. We are close, man. We are super close on Marcus's car. Um, I feel like we are just one, one or two wires being flipped around away from that car being done, bro. Well, when I say done, I mean running and driving. You know what I'm saying. Anyhow, there's still going to be a lot more of Marcus's car to come. We're going to clean it up and, you know, try to make it look more presentable once we get the thing running and driving. Anyhow, guys, I've also got my work cut out for me on khaki. We are going to be tearing into all this stuff, dude. Before any of this stuff goes back in the car, I need to go over and clean and refresh everything. We have put in quite a few miles on khaki and a lot of track days and, you know, Mexico racing and everything else. It's just, it's, it's time for the car to just be freshened up and gone over once again. Uh, got the engine out. I am going to be cracking into this in the next video. Going to get it up on the stand and we're going to get this head pulled off, man. Um, I will show you guys this one exhaust runner is really full of oil, man. I don't know if that has something to do uh, with our problem, but this one is super wet in comparison to all the rest. 
Anyhow guys, I gotta get this transmission off. We're gonna pull the head and everything. I'm excited to see what the inside of this engine is looking like because I am hoping that's where we are going to find our problem. Um, I'm gonna get started on that right now. That's gonna be tomorrow's video for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please do smash the like button. Peace, and I'll see you guys on the next one.